Welcome to Yalgarup National Park. The Department of Parks and Wildlife have been relocating western ringtail possums here for a number of years now, since 1991. The vegetation in Yagarup National Park is perfectly suited to the western ringtail possum. There is lots of peppermint, there are lots of tuits, and they also can create drays, which is their sleeping area up in the heights of the trees. With all the moisture coming off the ocean, there's enough water around the place and there is and lots of places to make their home. There are no rings on a ringtail possum. They've got quite a long white tip to the tail and you can see it curling and curling around. They'll whip that tail out and then use it to help them to get to the next branch. The Aboriginal name for the Western ringtail possum is the Nawea. This possum, like just about everything else in this part of the world, is unique. The Nawea is so iconic of what is in the southwest of Western Australia. We have here a biodiversity hotspot. The western ringtail possum lives very closely with the brush-tail possum. Brush-tail possums have quite a furry tail all the way down. It could be white or it could be black. The western ringtail possum is a very timid creature. It lives right at the top of the canopy. It comes out at night time, so you won't see it through the day. What you will see at night time, though, is these creatures move through the tops of the canopy. The timid nature of these western ringtail possums means that they don't have the defences that other animals have. The western ringtail possum itself is in decline. If we don't take action, if we don't implement changes, then this species will go from a threatened species down to perhaps critically endangered, which means it's just about just one step away from becoming extinct. Due to climate change, developments, agriculture, the distribution of the western ringtail possum has contracted markedly. So you can see them still around Bunbury and Bustleton. There's a large area around Perrup where you'll see them and also around Albany. So the Department of Parks and Wildlife have a program of translocating western ringtail possums from the areas where they're being impacted up into Yagarup National Park so that their numbers can increase in a natural environment. We're doing this to turn around the decline of the species. I think translocation can be a really good help if it's done correctly. If we can go to an area that isn't habitat, make that habitat by taking away the threats and the limiting factors, then we can release them there and set up populations quite successfully. Whenever you do a release, whenever you open that bag or open up the cage door, it could be that there's a raptor around or it could be a snake quite close by. So you've got to look at your environment before you release anything and then open those doors and let them go. The ringtail possum doesn't really recognise introduced predators, particularly cats. It hasn't evolved with these animals. So it doesn't fear them. So it's likely to walk right up to them and you often end up with ex-possums that way. The Department of Parks and Wildlife have the Western Shield program to decrease the number of feral animals or introduced predators in a specific location. We have less predators that can eat them and so their populations can expand. Wildlife volunteer rehabilitators take from us injured and sick wildlife, care for them for a number of days, sometimes weeks, before we can then take them and put them back into the native habitat. These animals very quickly can be susceptible to water stress and heat stress and actually fall out of the trees. What people need to do if they come across an injured or sick wild animal is to call Wild Care Helpline. It really needs to be handed to people who know exactly what they're doing. In releasing an animal into the wild, they have to be 100% healthy. If they've been with carers for too long, they could become imprinted, which means they become dependent on people feeding them regularly and keeping them in a sheltered position. And they lose this wild instinct, which makes them more susceptible to predation when they are out in the wild. In Yalgarup, we're having a good result with our translocations, but the story is not the same throughout the whole of the southwest and for this particular species. It's going to be very important that we all work together and each individual can have a hand in making sure these animals do survive. We were doing a bit of road widening, um, taking branches off the trees. Young Choco here is born from the nest and landed in the open sand. Found her and picked her up and took her to the wildlife carer. And here she is, ready to be released back into the natural habitat. This is a point where, if you do it properly, translocation can be incredibly valuable. But if we don't do this, we don't recognise habitats and we don't make habitats, then we will possibly lose this animal. You're camping in their natural environment. They've got their peppermint, their wildflower blossoms, and they're happy with that. So don't feed them, please. Very important message. 
So with your help, the backing of the researchers, and with all of our volunteers, we will have a species not going to extinction, but being with us for many years to come. So enjoy your stay in Yalgarup National Park. <laughs>